Due to um, animal husbandry practices, we sort of have an increased need for looking at intestinal integrity in animals because our um, swine are um, sort of exposed to so many different types of stressors. And so intestinal integrity is really, or the, the GI tract and function of it is really the gateway to health and production in the animal. Uh, because if the GI tract isn't functioning correctly, it's not absorbing nutrients correctly, and there's some sort of um, either injury or infection or something like that, then peripheral tissues like muscle and adipose tissue and other organs like the brain and the liver are also not going to be functioning uh, in order to optimize production and health in the animal. Welcome to the Soy Nutrition Black Bed Podcast, where we explore the science behind soy nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and today in our podcast, we have Dr. Sarah Pierce, who is a research animal physiologist working with the USDA. We will discuss intestinal integrity today. Dr. Pierce, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us today. And before we dig into this, could you give a brief introduction of yourself? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, so as you mentioned, I'm a research animal physiologist with the USDA ARS in Ames, Iowa, and I primarily work in swine and a little bit in poultry, uh, looking at gut integrity and nutritional interventions um, to improve or maintain animal production. Excellent. Well, thanks again for joining us. And, you know, so intestinal integrity. So could you start with a quick definition of integrity, right? And what specific structures of the intestine are we discussing today? Yeah, so that's a pretty broad term, and it actually refers to uh, a lot of different things. But ultimately, intestinal integrity refers to a physical and biochemical barrier um, that prevents sort of the harmful passage of molecules that shouldn't be going across the intestine from going across. So we want um, nutrients to go across, and we don't want harmful things like pathogens to go across. And so integrity just refers to sort of the selective passage of those items. And that involves, um, specific structures. There's multiple transport routes across the intestine, but integrity generally refers to um, paracellular transport. So going in between um, neighboring epithelial cells, and there's multiple ways that that can be measured, but ultimately it kind of is broken down into larger molecules and then smaller molecules like ions. So sodium chloride and things like that. Excellent. Well, you know, intestine, that's such a critical organ for um, in swine, for sure, you know. So what is the role of, of the intestinal barrier integrity in swine health and performance? And why that has become such a critical focus in, in modern swine nutrition? Yeah, so due to um, animal husbandry practices, we sort of have an increased need for looking at intestinal integrity in animals because our um, swine are... Um, sort of exposed to so many different types of stressors. And so intestinal integrity is really, or the, the GI tract and function of it is really the gateway to health and production in the animal. Uh, because if the GI tract isn't functioning correctly, it's not absorbing nutrients correctly, and there's some sort of um, either injury or infection or something like that, then peripheral tissues like muscle and adipose tissue and other organs like the brain and the liver are also not going to be functioning uh, in order to optimize production and health in the animal. You mentioned uh, and a specific word there that is stuck in my head is about the stressors, right? So what are some of those main stressors that impact the ga gastrointestinal tract in pigs and how those stressors compromise the gut function? Yeah, so there's quite a few that pigs have to deal with uh, from environmental stress. So that could include heat or cold stress, transportation stress, weaning stress is a really big one, and um, things like enteric pathogens and even some non-enteric pathogens can actually impact the GI tract. And there's a common theme in a lot of these, uh, not all, but feed restriction. So a lot of these stressors cause animals to reduce feed intake, and that in itself can negatively impact the GI tract. Um, and so this can happen in a number of ways. It depends on the stressor, but a lot of this can lead to increased gut permeability of bacterial components. And if uh, severe enough, sometimes, in, you know, whole bacteria, and this can lead to sepsis in the animal. In terms of enteric pathogens, this can um, 
actually lead to changes in secretion, which lead to diarrhea. And so post-weaning diarrhea is a really big issue that can be caused by multiple enteric pathogens. At Barnes, we're more than just another feed additive company. We are driven by science, innovation, and an understanding of the challenges you face in the ever-changing world of animal agriculture. We are your trusted partner for new-to-market natural alternative to choline chloride, colon plus FC, as well as enzymes, prebiotics, probiotics, macro minerals. To learn more about our product offering, visit barnes-ne.com forward slash animal nutrition. Together, there's always a better solution. You know, of course, we're talking about nutrition today because we love that topic. We couldn't leave it out of the table. So from the nutritional perspective, I mean, what strategies or feed additives have shown most promise in supporting uh, gut barrier function, right? And helping those pigs with cope with some of those stressors that you has, you just have mentioned. Uh, and again, you know, I, I, I understand this is a very broad question, but uh, with your expertise, you probably, you know, have filtered a bunch of technologies and we would love to hear, you know, what do you think has been successful to help us with these kind of challenges? Yeah, so I'll first start out broadly by just stating that for the most part, um, the idea here would be looking at preventative measures. So priming the gastrointestinal tract, uh, hopefully before these animals are exposed to these stressors so that they're more able to um, you know, manage those stresses. When we're talking about animals that are reducing feed intake, sometimes just feeding them something is not an easy strategy because you have to be able to get them to eat. Uh, but there have been a lot of specific uh, nutritional interventions that have been studied under things like heat stress and weaning stress. Um, some of those include amino acids. So glutamine and arginine have been looked at a lot and have shown some promise. Uh, phytogens or polyphenolics. So um, in that regard, think of, you know, berries or curcumin um, and some of those phytogens, as well as um, some minerals and vitamins. So I know zinc is a big issue right now in the EU, but zinc and selenium have been looked at a lot and have shown promise um, and vitamin E as well. And then biotics, which I know is a really broad term, but you know, probiotics and prebiotics, especially fiber is a really big one um, that is very important for maintaining gut health because of the short chain fatty acids that it helps produce like butyrate. So there's been a lot of work looking at butyrate and its um, positive impact on the, on the GI tract. Excellent. And you know, uh, this is a fascinating topic and I'm sure we could spend the, the whole morning talking about it, but um, we, that's all the time we have today, but uh, Sarah, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, everyone, thanks for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Bed Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us some comments. Join us in our next episode.